In today's video, we're going to try and categorize every single tool that I use for my YouTube channel because my YouTube channel is my main source of income. It's my business and businesses have taxes. And when you have taxes, you want to try to have as many tax write-offs as possible. So one way to save money on taxes is to write down all the tools you use. Let's start off with our recording equipment. I have two tripods that I use mostly, a very long, sturdy one, and a little shorter but more compacted one. And it's pretty unreliable. It's a Stitz CT5. Now, the main camera that I use, and the one you're seeing through right now, is my Casio XM EXZR1000. This is also my high-speed camera. Whenever I'm needing specific audio recorded, or separate from a camera, I use my Zoom H1 audio recorder, and it works pretty good. Now, to charge some devices, most of the time I just plug it into the back of my computer. But whenever I have to have it like a plug outside so I, so I can charge it in between takes, my battery is like really, really low, I use this 110 volt AC to 5 volt USB adapter. Now, I have like two or three SD cards, but these are the only ones I can find right now. Oh, the other ones in my camera. Okay, so I have a 32 gigabyte class 10 SD card and an adapter in the, the camera you're watching right now. Then I have this one. It's an adapter with a 32 gigabyte class 4 micro SD in it. And this one is a class, I think it's like a class 8 or something like that, 2 gigabyte. And that's for the Zoom H1. Now, this is like my backup camera. It's my, ca it's my Motorola Zoom tablet. This is what I originally started filming my YouTube videos on. Well, at least the old, oldest ones that are on right now. Previously, before that, back in like 2009 and stuff, I recorded with a, a full-sized VHS camera, but oh well. Then another, like, more durable camera I have is this knockoff of a GoPro. It's the Midland 720p HD, and it's in a waterproof container. And now you're seeing through my Motorola Zoom tablet. This is what I mostly use to record my Casio EXZR1000 on the top of my tripod. I hardly ever run just the EXZR1000 by itself because adding the top of the tripod to it makes it have more mass. So when I move around, it moves less, or at least the movements are more fluid. That way I, I, I can walk around and the movements are more fluid, but it's not like really shaking or whatnot. Also, it just gives you more control over the camera. And here's all the stuff that I consider equipment. Like, for instance, we have my Swiss 1970s or 1960s gas mask. I have my mining lamp from Arduino vs. Evil. My IMAX B6 balance charger. My Hewlett Packard 34970A. My homemade 100 watt LED lamp. My multimeter. My vacuum pump. My CDV 700 Geiger counter. And my microscope. Now, the prices of these would be, actually, they were to me. $45 free, but if I didn't get that for free from uh, from Arduino vs. Evil, that'd be an arm, arm and a leg, maybe a couple hundred dollars for one of those new. $30 for this. If I didn't get that free from Chipper 6, it would be a couple hundred dollars probably. This was about $25 in parts. This was $25, 26 or whatever, but it was free to me because my, my dad gave it to me for my for a Christmas a couple years ago. It's about $80 for that, $50 for this, and $120 for that. I would count this tool, but it's kind of useless. It's too squishy. I almost forgot two other pieces of equipment. My One of my best pieces of equipment I've had, my universal power supply. That cost me about, I think it was like 70 or 80 bucks. And also another piece that I don't have with me right now, my oscilloscope. I'll superimpose a picture of that, though. There's it right there. Now, on my desk, I usually keep some random junk on here. But of all the tools that I own, the one tool that is like the Swiss Army knife of my tools is, in fact, my Swiss Army knife. That thing is... I got it when I was like 13 or whatever, and I lost it at a friend's house. My parents got me another one. I lost that one. Then my friends found this and gave it back to me. So, it survived quite a bit. I've caught it on fire a couple of times and whatnot, but it's very useful. You, you pretty much see it in every one of my videos. I also have my Leatherman. This one is... I love the Leatherman. I found this down at St. Joe State Park in the sand. It was just sitting half buried. It was in like a little... I almost want to say like Kevlar container, but if it felt like Kevlar, I don't know. Maybe it was. They're kind of crazy about making containers out of really tough stuff. Then I have my infrared thermometer. You can just point it at something and tell exactly what the temperature is. Have some dentist 
tweezers. I use these for small objects. My aunt gave that to me because she's a dentist, or at least she used to be. Don't know now. Uh, some screwdrivers from another set that we'll go over later. Some smaller screwdrivers for electronics bits. A small tripod so I can set the camera up onto here and just have it playing really close. I don't use this very often, but I have used it. Tire pressure gauge, which should not be up here because I do not take tires into my room too, very often. This is part of a ratchet set that I have outside. We'll go over that later. Another screwdriver. Some stubby AC Delco. I didn't even realize that. And AC Delco, I think they're called Allen wrenches. Yeah. And my 1973 or no, 1975 Brother R 827R calculator. This one on the back has a stamp of uh, so Southern Illinois University. Never been there, but I thought it was kind of cool. Oh, and I can't forget my big soldering iron. This is the only soldering iron of this size that I that I know of. I think it's meant for industrial factory line work. It's an American Beauty catalog number 3178. Now, if you type that up on eBay, you can find one. Sometimes you can find them for like 20 or $30, but most of the time they're like $100. And they're brand new. They still make them, even though this one's from the 1960s. They still make them, but they're like $280. Oh, well, they last a long time, and they get very hot. Now let's go on to computers. This is my first main laptop. It's my it's an IBM ThinkPad 3D5 CD from 1996. Then I tried upgrading to this I think it's an X20. Yeah, it's an X20. It's an IBM ThinkPad X24 from 2002. It has a Chinese keyboard which is kind of cool. Unfortunately, that fried from an experiment. So I went back to that. Now, my main computer that I render and whatnot is my Asus CM6850 with an upgraded power supply and I believe it's an NVIDIA GTX 560 Ti. can't remember what graphics card it is, but it's more than powerful enough. I have one terabyte hard drive inside here. I have a three terabyte USB external hard drive, another one terabyte in external hard drive, and another one terabyte in external hard drive. So I have six terabytes total and they're all kind of filling up because I'm using up a lot of memory with, with recording these videos and saving them. Then my secondary, or she might, yeah, my secondary desktop computer is my Optiplex, my Dell Optiplex 320. It's from 2006 or so, but it's great for having little experiments and whatnot. I can have things running with that, then just unplug the video cable and plug it back in here and work on this one while that's doing whatever experiment. And I run these computers on my primary monitor of my Acer V193W. It's 14 inches across. I think it's 1440 by 900 resolution. I, on a side note, I've been thinking about getting this welder from the 1940s off Craigslist. Looks pretty cool. I think it, I, I think it could weld quite nicely, and if not, it could it could power an arc furnace really well. Anyway, so then I have for my secondary monitor, I have the VGA signal going through here, which converts it to NTSC. Which you, if you watch my random bit series, you probably see that a couple, a couple of videos ago, and that goes to my. 1982 Commodore 64. Actually, it's for the Commodore 64, but it's a Commodore model 1702 color monitor. And I have a switch in the back, which when you flip it, instead of taking the video signal from the computer, now you can turn on your Nintendo, or my Nintendo, and I can play games on it, or whatever console I put there. Now for the keyboard and stuff, I have a 1995 Japanese IBM keyboard with the Japanese symbols on it. It helps with typing Japanese. And my main mouse cursor controller is a Logitech, oh let's see, TCD26F Trackman. I've gone through two of these already and this one's already starting to fail. I might have to buy another one from eBay. Now we're going to be doing the more mechanical tools. Like underneath my bed, we have this hash brown box from McDonald's full of my tools. I just kind of throw them all down there. Here's all the stuff that was in that box, and it's all stuff that I use regularly. And I'm not even going to worry about talking about every little piece. I have some clamping stuff, probably about 13 pliers, some wrenches, some tongs, some drill bits, some screwdrivery stuff, some chisels, zip ties, spyglass. I don't use that too often. Things to hold a camera and to mount them on to PVC pipe and whatnot. A knife switch, a big knife switch. 
wire split, uh, wire strippers, tin snips, a teeny tiny crowbar, three files, some wrenches. These are my favorite wrenches right here. Bolt cutters, pipe wrench, to blacksmith tongs, wrench or um, drill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hammers, my welding gloves, and a piece of one and a half inch thick acrylic. Then a couple other little random bits in here too. I got knock off Swiss Army knife and whatnot. Now behind the box of tools is another box for laboratory equipment. I have my, I believe they're called volumetric flasks. I have several of those. I have some Erlenmeyer flasks. I have a boiling flask, 1,000 milliliter. I have quite a few of them. They are definitely not very clean. I mean, I don't use this to conduct very important experiments right now. And if I did, I would clean them up, like put them in the dishwasher or something. I have this that I use. I fill it up with water to put water into lead acid batteries. And yeah, I use some of this stuff. But unfortunately, I, I, I use pretty much all of this stuff outside of my YouTube videos. But I just haven't had much of a chance to do chemistry in my YouTube videos. Oh well. We're outside now, and one item that I use a lot is this cart I made out of an old lawnmower. And I use it mostly to carry around these batteries for welding. Mostly these three batteries, but sometimes I carry more or different ones. I use this wash tub to electrolyze, to hold liquids so I can electrolyze metal, or electrolyze the rust off them. I've used that several times. And I use this extension cord very frequently because I don't actually have like a power cord coming out here. Now these batteries, all five of them, go inside of my electric lawn tractor, which is a very handy tool, and I've used it in my videos quite often. And on the front, it even has another tool that fits onto it, which I've used very well. I, it actually is a tool. It's the my plow type thing, the front loader, for my, electric, uh, for my electric lawn tractor. I have all these various tools, shovel, 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 Pickaxe, breaker bar, crowbar, post hole digger, hoe, auger, and winch. Oh, oh, and this big hook. Sometimes it's the most simplest tools that are the most handy. My great grandfather made this, and he he gave it to me, and it's it's really useful. It's a very simple tool, but it's great for like dragging stuff out of the woods and whatnot. With we have my welding setup here which consists of about three sets of jumper cables. It's about like $35 or so. And it has an electrode holder and some other little stuff like grinding stone and stuff in there. And here's the extra batteries that I use in case I'm needing more power. Like sometimes I connect eight car batteries in series to give me enough power to cut through metal and whatnot. And we have my bench grinder. My set of rubber gloves, which I... I lost one of them. I have these two chisels and this chisel, this wire brush and this hammer. Then over here we have my vise with looks like a 1950s or 40s or so C-clamp. I never really looked at it until I just just now, but I think that looks kind of older because of the front and the head twisted thing on it. I have a second C-clamp over here that's holding this on, but usually it goes right next to the other one. Now, over here we have, I forgot I had this, this is an easel that I used to use for the tripod for my tablet, and I still do use it quite often. I just used it last week to make a time lapse. I didn't end up using the time lapse, but I might use it later. Then I have this socket set, it has a 200, has about 201 pieces in it, 210 or something, I don't know. Then it ha I have this, it's a Corning Stir hot plate. Now these things are actually quite kind of expensive new, maybe a couple hundred dollars, and used to maybe like... I think last time I checked, they were like $200 used. Of course, this one only half works, so it's probably worth like $100. I have this $40 smart charger from eBay, uh, from Walmart. I forgot where I got it. I have my 100-year-old axe and probably equally old maul for driving railroad spikes. I use that for smashing things. I have my electric bicycle, and I, I, I could count that off as my vehicle cost but it doesn't cost much of anything to drive it it's like three cents per charge so it's not really worth it but yeah i have my electric bicycle i could count as a vehicle i have this solar panel that i made i think it's 40 watts but 
I didn't actually get 40 watts from it. Now in my shed I have two welding helmets. I use this one mostly, but I also use this one sometimes. I have a pair of jumper cables, which I use pretty frequently. And I have this oxyacetylene kit that I got for free from my uncle. I don't actually use it, or I haven't used it yet for oxyacetylene torching, but I have used it as weight because I've used this one. I, I dropped this cylinder onto a, a bakery tray to bend it to make a fin for a wind turbine. I also have these two 500 watt halogen lamps that I use to illuminate my yard so I can film at night. Now over here I have this sieve for or strainer so I can get stuff out of a bath of that I've been electrolyzing rust out of. And I have this Alice frame which I used for a camera mount a couple months ago, or actually last year. And I'm actually going to be using this to build a, a Ghostbusters proton pack in not too long of a time. I have my circular saw, 1930s, 1940s pipe wrench that I restored. I have two more hammers. I have this old butane torch that I accidentally broke it, but I'll, I'll try to fix that. I, I, I used it though. I have this gasoline blowtorch that I nicknamed Gary. And I use this quite often. I have this computer ATX power supply that I use for electrolysis and, and charging batteries and whatnot. I have this 600 watt, or, oh, 750 watt power inverter that goes from 12 volts to power things like tools and stuff. And I have this grease gun. And I think that's all my tools. If not, that's all the ones that I use frequently. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!